Hey everyone, welcome back to Twin Astrology. It's Marla once again here to talk to you about the North Node moving into Taurus, South Node moving into Scorpio. This is a very, very important shift. You know, where the nodes are is just so important to our soul's journey, our ascension process, where we're growing individually and collectively. And this shift is taking place on January 19th. Now, the North Node has been in the sign of Gemini since May 6th of 2020. It takes about 18 months for the nodes to work their way through a sign. Now, remember the North and South Node, they're an axis point. So they're always forming an opposition to each other. And the North Node will be in the sign of Taurus until July 18th of 2023. Now, this is going to be a fun transit, guys. <laughs> fun like a heart attack, I'm sure. No, you know, it won't be that bad. But um, it'll be interesting. I'll say that because not only are these very interesting signs themselves with um, you know, that control some interesting things about ourselves, but there's going to be a lot of interesting configurations as well. For example, Uranus has been in Taurus for a few years and, um, the North node will be crossing Uranus and Saturn is going to be squaring the nodes and, uh, so we had that Uranus Saturn square activating the nodal axis. And then there's going to be a lot of other planets transiting through there, of course. And um, yeah, some asteroids too, making some interesting aspects. I'll be talking about these things all through the year in my astrology updates, but especially, you know, or what's coming up soon, I would say the spring eclipses are going to be very, very transformational and uh, really anchoring us in that new energy. Although I think that we've already been feeling the shift and that happens as the nodes get close to changing signs. We're already starting to feel that energy coming in. And so last year, for example, um, I mentioned a few times that soulmates were coming in to play roles with us. And that is part of things that are connected to this energy. So I want to start talking a little bit about Uranus, who, as I said, has been in Taurus for a while. I have a video that I did Gosh, I don't remember exactly when Uranus went into Taurus anymore, probably in 2017, 2018. I did a video on that transit. You can find it somewhere back in my videos. But Uranus, of course, is the great awakener. And Uranus helps us develop our individuality. The sign of Taurus itself has a lot to do with our individuality in the sense of it can be what we value, what we value about ourselves, the material things we value. And it's, it has to do with our self-reliance and things as well, which is part of our individuality. It's, it, it's interesting though, because Uranus rules Aquarius, which it will be, is a sign that's squaring the nodes. They're all part of the fixed axis, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And yet, so Uranus rules Aquarius, as I was saying, this is all about the community, the collective, and yet Uranus itself is very much about individuality. So as I mentioned in, Another video I did, there can be this dichotomy within the energy of Aquarius, Uranus, where it's like, 
you know, there's a, there's a real focus and a desire for the group to be um, expressing itself as a healthy community while also still wanting to be alone and be an individual and kind of distance oneself from the group. And I'm talking about this because I feel like it's energy that we're going to experience this year with the North Node making a conjunction to Uranus. Because even though the nodes are activating Taurus and Scorpio, they're also going to be activating those signs that are square, the Leo Aquarius. One of the ways that's happening is Saturn is going to be squaring the nodes from Aquarius. Now Scorpio, not Scorpio, Saturn is also the ruler of Aquarius along with Uranus, um, Saturn being the ancient ruler. And so one of the things that I think will be activated through this transit is the conflict that we have between our individual desires and our individuality versus the structure of control that that will have a lot to do with the collective energy but also inwardly fears that we have developed stemming from persecution in our past lives and being driven out of society and hopefully you'll see how that fits in with the Taurus Scorpio axis as we go on and, and we talk about some of this energy. So let's start by actually talking about the South Node because the South Node is representing our past, our karma, um, some of the things we need to change. I think with the nodes, it's important to remember that it's an axis that wants to be balanced there can be a tendency for us to believe that the South Node is all negative, negative, negative. The North Node is all good, good, good. And so we, we don't want to look at things that are related to the South Node. But that's not true. The South Node has good and bad things attached to it. As I talked about in my last video, you can't really integrate the good things about your past, whether it's from this lifetime or any other lifetime, until you've healed that. Because you might be experiencing trauma that's actually blocking you from integrating those positive skills um, on a soul level. So Scorpio itself represents shadow and the unconscious. All the water signs have an element of being connected to things that are unconscious. And with Scorpio, one of the primary areas we're going to be exploring is power issues. And how this connects to our shadow is because very often we cannot acknowledge either our desire to have power or our lack of power. And so a lot of the things that get placed in our own little shadow box relates to that. Either we have too much power and we use it to manipulate people in some way, or there's too little power and people are manipulating us and betraying us in some way. And, you know, either way, it, of course, it makes us feel inadequate in one way or the other. So it gets put in that shadow box. And we will go to great lengths to keep these kinds of things in that shadow box and out of our awareness. So what happens when we have those things that we're not acknowledging as we project that onto other people in our relationships. Scorpio is the sign of intimate relationships. We have Libra, which really rules all types of relationships. And then Scorpio 
rules relationships where we're actually merging with someone in some way or we're sharing something with some way. We might be, you know, sharing marriage or sharing physical intimacy with someone or we're sharing our finances and um, our material things that we have. Fourth Scorpio is also about transformation as well. So really expect the next 18 months to be very transformational for everybody. But when we get to this place where we have these unacknowledged desires and we're projecting them, you know, or we've We've been hurt, we've been betrayed, we've been deceived. It's all part of that Scorpio energy, the negative aspects of Scorpio. And then we don't trust. And isn't that like one of the stereotypes that you hear about Scorpio, um, people that have strong Scorpio in their chart is they find it very hard to trust. The truth is we all find it hard to trust and trust is something that is very much being activated, was activated in 2021, and will continue to be deeply activated in 2022, because your self-mastery demands that you trust in the universe and that you trust in yourself. But um, yeah, those, those shadow elements, those hurt feelings, we don't trust then we can't be ourselves. We seek acceptance from other people so that we can feel good about ourselves. We seek union with another person because we seek comfort and love. And subconscious power dynamics play out with others. And some of the negative ways that those dynamics play out comes from feelings of jealousy, obsession, controlling people, not being able to let go. And, and, you know, all of that can lead to love, feelings of love being corrupted until they become a feeling of hate. So, you know, Scorpio at its essence is such a beautiful energy. If you're a twin flame, you probably heard me say before that I consider Scorpio to be the ruler of twin flames because it's the energy of merging of oneness. Um, it rules sex. So it, it is that physical merging of the body. That's, uh, you know, very explicitly merging, but there's so many other, ways that we we merge too and we are going to be merging a lot of ways this year like expect to have growth in your feelings of union and perhaps not just with one person but with the collective energies as well but the thing is that energy of scorpio has been very distorted and perhaps more than any other sign the energy of scorpio has been distorted it's actually 222 two, two here as well as i say that so that must mean something um yeah it, it's there's a lot of negative i think the negative traits of scorpio can be connected to such powerful human emotions and so deeply connected to our ego self that that's why it's been so distorted over time. But, you know, maybe this transit will help us get back to that uh, beautiful energy of Scorpio. Well, it definitely will, you know, and Mars rules Scorpio, which is our most primal energy. And sometimes that primalness within us creates fear within us, fear of ourselves and that fear of, you know, our more animalistic nature, perhaps that longs for power and control. Um, so things that we can expect to come up this year, 
number one is there's going to be a big focus on relationships, as I've said, and we're going to be uncovering some of these shadow aspects. I say we, I don't just mean me and you, like the people that are watching this, the people that are already awake. But when I say we, I mean the whole world is going to be uncovering these aspects. And um, has people awaken, they're going to begin to see their projections, the codependency, the unhealthy attachments that they have with people. And, you know, they're going to start to be triggered into deciding, is this an attachment that I want? Is this a relationship that I want? As we move through Taurus and we begin to focus on our individuality, who we truly are, what we truly value, what we desire in our life, there's going to be this conflict for people around their relationships because so many people are still in what we call a karmic relationship um, because often those people are attracted to each other based on their karma and not based on unconditional love. Now, can they transform a karmic situation to unconditional love? Absolutely, they can. But they have to go through this healing process and witness those things that are unacknowledged within themselves and stop projecting it onto the other person. So, um, yeah, I very, very clearly I'm getting messages from spirit that relationships will be a factor. Now, if you're a twin flame too, you're probably wondering how is that going to impact me? Um, you know, like for example, you may be in a karmic relationship or your partner may be in a karmic relationship. Will those relationships end? I, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to end or not. I think that people, as I said, are going to be looking at things more clearly. They're going to be searching for truth in relationship. And they're going to begin to uncover the truth about who they are. And when that happens, the breakdown of relationships is a natural consequence of it. But as we said, that Scorpio energy can also be control and not wanting to let go and manipulation. And so if that energy is still strong, you know, you're, you're still going to see people that are fighting to hold on to things, even though it's not what they really want, even though it would be better for them to let go. Um, so we'll just have to see. But I do think that if you're a twin and you're not in union, you may find that you have a soulmate coming into your life to show you where you're still in your projections, where you still have a unacknowledged relationship issues. Um, yeah, because often, you know, we project that karmic relationship stereotype onto the divine masculine. But what I'm seeing is that a lot of divine feminine also still have karma to clear in relationship to other people. And maybe that hasn't been a factor for you up till now, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen. So some other things that might come up in relation to this shift. Well, we often jokingly say that Scorpio rules sex, death, and taxes. So those issues are something that's probably gonna come up maybe some issues around sex in the sense of, as I said, what do we truly value around sexuality? Um, you know, it seems like in today's society, sex has very little value for people. It's something that's entered into haphazardly without any real forethought, you know, and I think that we have to maybe consider that we, we have this belief that in the old days, 
we were repressed sexually and we broke free of that repression and we blamed authority figures for creating that uh, repression. But now it's almost like authority has done the opposite and authority now uses sexuality as a way to control humanity. It's like if you, if you keep people focused on sex, if you keep people addicted to porn, if you keep dumbing them down through um, very explicit sexuality being portrayed in music and movies and by celebrities, a focus on the physical body and uh, especially a focus on certain features of the physical body. Um, you have to see that there is kind of a, a wheel like this Hollywood wheel, if you will, that benefits from keeping people like that. And as we awaken, we have to break through all of those hidden beliefs. It's like, it's like they want people to, to treat sexuality without um, sacredness, without forethought. Sexuality is something very, very powerful. And when it's used through a sacred connection built on unconditional love and pure vulnerability, it is the most powerful magical force in the universe and so powerful for manifestation. And, you know, a lot of people would rather not have people know that there's that power. Now, I'm not trying to be conspiratorial or talk about like the dark energies or anything, but you know, even consider that it's not being done intentionally, but it's certainly being done subconsciously. I mean, personally, I feel it's intentional and we get bombarded subliminally all the time by this information, you know, but I'll just, I'll just wrap it up by saying that with the South Node and Scorpio, we need to start looking at real, true, sacred sexuality where our heart is involved. And it's not just a physical release, but it's ex an expression of love and commitment and oneness. So also I mentioned death. So, well, first of all, you know, when the North Node transits into Scorpio, or I'm sorry, the South Node transits into Scorpio, um, that probably is going to be a time where some souls decide to cross over. Um, whenever we have major planets or major energetic bodies transiting in and out of Scorpio, it, it does create that time of crossing over. And I think that, you know, there's a reason behind that right now, because humanity has a fear of death in general, and that's something that needs to be cleared. And as we awaken, that's a huge thing that we clear how we view death and our fear of death. You know, personally, that was well at the beginning of my awakening. I had, to I had to confront that fear because my mother passed away when Saturn went into Scorpio in 2012. As soon as Saturn went into Scorpio, you know, that, like I said, people began to cross over and my mother was one of them. And I had to confront my own fear of death due to some situations that happened around that. It was a very unexpected death and being brought up uh, heavily Christian. I had beliefs, you know, that it was very likely that I was going to go to hell <laughs> when I died. So of course I didn't want to die. 
And I think that's quite common. And go working through that, confronting a lot of those fears, um, really helped me a lot. And that's really what led me to do past life regression work. Because at that time, I became so interested in past lives. And I began to witness my own past lives um, through having visions. And it helped me to believe that our soul never ends. There is no death. There's only death of this physical body. But we live on we transform and we continue so i think that you know having to confront the fear of death is important and unfortunately it can happen in that way when someone close to us you know crosses over but as a, as a society, we really need to break through um, these unacknowledged fears that we have around death and the dying process. And then taxes, of course, money is going to be a factor. Taurus and Scorpio is the axis of our money. And... Um, that will be coming into play. I think it will come into play individually because we'll all be looking at the things that we value, our own wealth, how we share our wealth with other people, which is the Scorpio energy. In, in Taurus, we gain our wealth. In Scorpio, we share our wealth with others. Um, yeah. So let me go into the Taurus energy a little bit, because as we start moving into what we need to heal about Taurus, the biggest thing is the focus on our individuality, who we are, what we want, most importantly, what it is we value. A lot of people don't really know what they value. Their values are based upon what society values and it, it that may not be their own true values so moving through the next year and a half we can expect that people get awakened to the fact that they may need to adjust their values or their values may have changed what do you really stand for is something that this energy is going to ask you about and it's going to ask you what you value about yourself. Your most important wealth, your wealthiest thing. I don't know how to, how to word it. Um, is you. Your abundance comes from you. You are important to your sense of wealth and abundance. And if you don't feel good about yourself, if you don't have self-confidence, then you're not in alignment with the things that you're trying to attract. So again, it's like getting to the bottom of the things that are keeping you out of alignment with your dreams and goals. And to that end, then we have to heal the guilt and the shame and the unacknowledged things in Scorpio so that we can acknowledge the good things about ourselves and allow our true self to be seen. We need to cultivate self-reliance. So this axis is so connected to codependency and that really has to get broken down. So I think that a lot of people are going to find if they're, if they're in the energy of codependency, that might create some issues for them. Um, there's, there's going to be challenges because this time is about building our self-reliance and you need that to, to embrace your individuality. You need to have self-reliance because if you don't, then you're worried about what other people think of you. And if you've got that, then how can you be yourself? 
Um, I have a note here, no running though. So you don't want to be codependent, but you don't want to run away from relationships either because that can be a negative aspect of Taurus is uh, wanting independence so much that they maybe run away from connection or a lot of times there can be that push pull within oneself. They want connection, but the connection then scares them because they feel like connection is going to take away their individuality in some way. So it's all about balance, balance, balance. How can we value ourselves enough to expose our true self? And we need to feel good from the inside. If we're looking to make ourselves feel good externally, especially in a relationship or through the eyes of another person, you're probably going to get shown that that's not the energy that you want to be in right now. But we can see that with possessions too. Taurus rules our possessions and um, you know, as a society, I think we need to look at how we view possessions. We know that it's an abundant universe and that we can have anything that we want and we can have abundance and we can have luxury. But and there's a but here. We don't want to hoard it. We don't want to hoard money. We don't want to hoard possessions. We don't want to have so many possessions that we feel like we're being weighed down. So many possessions that we don't even know what we have because we just have stuff everywhere. You've probably seen those shows about hoarders and everything's just piled up in boxes and they don't even know what's there. Okay, that's the energy that we want to move away from. We want to move into a healthy relationship with our possessions where we can feel abundant and luxurious but not trapped and not needy not looking for self-worth through what we own that's old energy our self-worth comes from our soul and who we are inside but you know this is something that i've been seeing as I said, I've already been experiencing some of this energy. One of the things I do is I love to um, buy antiques and I go to estate sales in order to find antiques. And <laughs> when you go to it, estate sales, sometimes you see like, wow, as human beings, we own way too much stuff big houses, jam-packed. Some people don't even live in big houses, but their houses are just jam-packed with things that are still in the box that has never been used. And it's really showing to me that, again, has a collective, we have a sickness around possessions. And and it's a karmic thing. It's not, I'm not trying to blame people for that, but a lot of times people have, a karmic situation where they had their possessions displaced. A, a lot of times, if people have strong Taurus energy, they've been through some kind of trauma, like a, a, a natural disaster, for example, or some kind of war, and people have lost all of their possessions. And if you have that on a karmic level, then you might have an ego hang up where you feel safe if you have possessions around and that makes you buy more possessions. But again, that's an unhealthy attachment to things that's coming from a shadow element within us, an unrational fear, um, an ill found sense of safety when we have to find all of that within ourselves. And I think that we're going to be exploring things like that over this next period of time. 
Um, so yeah, all these things that have been kind of hidden away from us, we've got to get back to being able to follow what's truly in our heart. And our heart is really going to tell us the things that we value. Wealth is power is another thing, right? And in our society, people that have wealth have more power. And um, that's an unhealthy attachment. It's a false attachment. How we share our things with other people, right? Not hoarding, but being willing to share. Boundaries. Right? That's part of our breaking down codependency. We need to discover healthy boundaries. Um, being able to deal with crisis in a healthy way. As I just said, sometimes when we have strong Taurus, we've had to deal with crisis. And that's led us to some unhealthy coping mechanisms. And then in the Scorpio energy, the Scorpio energy can be too attached to crisis. Um, it, it is a, they, you can turn that into a positive because one of the things that people that have strong Scorpio energy are good at is handling crisis situations. They make great counselors, for example, and psychologists because of that, or other people, doctors, for example, because they can really deal with crisis. But where if we've had an imbalance in that energy of crisis, then we may need to look at that. And taking time to enjoy life. You know, that's really the Taurus energy when we're in balance, when we're aligned and we can enjoy life and we can enjoy our things, as I said, in a healthy way. And um, finding that balance with other people. So it's interesting that as we kick off the North Node in Taurus, the ruler of Taurus, Venus, is in retrograde. And that's giving us plenty of time to already start to think about these things, um, especially thinking about relationships and also thinking about authority figures and how authority figures and the collective energy has played into these things for us, perhaps, and about our own vulnerability and where we stand with that. The upcoming full moon will affect that too. If you haven't watched my other video talking about the Cancer full moon, you may want to. If you related with this video, please consider subscribing. Um, and YouTube has been unsubscribing people again. So if you were subscribed, please check that you are still subscribed. Hit the notification bell if you wanna know when I post videos again. And thank you so much for watching. If you would like a personal reading, you can visit my website, which is twinstrology.com. Check the link below. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Namaste.